Uh, I wanted to make just a quick video to upload for the classes uh, for a couple reasons, mainly because one, the, the Monday class, we didn't get as great a data as we had hoped for on everything because uh, the computers were messing up, and two, it was near the end of class, and so I wanted to give everyone a chance to kind of review this without worrying about trying to get out the door um, and, uh, um, and get on their way, uh, especially the Friday class heading out to the wing weekend. So I'm going to go through how to calculate these answers um, here um, that were in the handout. So for the Monday class, here's a printout of what we should have gotten if the computers had been cooperating appropriately. But this, these are the same numbers um, that we had in class. And so let me just go ahead and show you the numbers that you need and the ones that are important. So for this, what we really need are peak power, average power and minimal minimum power and again what these numbers are going to then relate to are our peak power is going to be the maximum amount of power that we generated wherever that was during the exercise uh, if the exercise was done uh, at um, as hard as you could go all out full intensity then peak power should be located within the very first few seconds of, of the uh, Wingate test. The average power is what we use to define the essentially the average number, the average amount of power extended over the entire 30 seconds of the Wingate test. And finally, the minimum power in watts is the lowest power measured throughout the uh, in, throughout the duration of the 30 second Wingate test. Uh, Along with peak power, if you were going all out, we should always see minimum power in the very last moments of this 30 second wind gate test um, to be able to use that. So here's some data from class. I'm gonna write these numbers down and keep them handy so that we can uh, then make our calculations. Okay, so back to our uh, Microsoft Word, so I'll write those numbers down here. So uh, the subject here, I'll just give you their weight. Uh, is 75 kilograms. Peak power, let's go through here. So we have peak equals 76.3, Average power equals 578.04 and minimum power was equal to 363.6. Okay, so now let's work through the calculations. So here, peak power uh, is given, right? So 763.44. Relatively straightforward um, and pretty simple. Should be able to get that one very easy on uh, any potential quiz or exams. For relative peak power, when we talk about the word relative here, what we specifically mean in the word relative is relative to body size. This is a way we can compare uh, like males and females in power production or um, people who are significantly different sizes so that we can look at that. So for our relative peak power, the way we would calculate that is peak divided by body weight or in this case, 763.44 divided by 75 kilograms. So this is in watts, and this is in kilograms. So let me plug that into the calculator real fast. So that gives us a relative peak power of 10.18 watts, watts per kilogram. Okay, the next thing, to calculate anaerobic capacity. What we mean when we say anaerobic capacity is this is equal to total work done on the 30 second wind gate test.
right? Fairly straightforward. So what we, what we need to calculate this then is our average power um, because that's the main thing that we're going to need to um, be able to see how far we went uh, as a distance wise. So our average power in this case uh, was 578.04. Right. If we look at the equation for power, we get power equals force times distance divided by time. Or we can say power equals work divided by time. Okay. So therefore, to solve for work, what we need to do is multiply our power times our time in order to cancel out that divided by time going back to good old algebra. So in that situation, we'll use um, our average power, which is 570 to calculate. So then let's see, let's solve for that. So then work equals power times time. So therefore, then we'll use our uh, average power, 578.04. And we'll multiply it by our time of the test in seconds, or in minutes, sorry. So we've, we've given it in seconds, 30 seconds. So that's equal to 0 0.5 minutes. <coughs> Let me correct one thing real fast. So the first thing we need to do is actually convert this then into... Uh, kilogram meters to make it in the units that we're used to in this class. So to do that, we have our watts times six will get us in kilogram meters, and then we can multiply that by 0 0.05. So 578.04 watts times uh, six gives us a number of 3,468 kilogram meters per minute. And then to cancel out the minute part of that, again, we multiply by 0 0.05 minutes, or 0.5 minutes, not 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minutes. So then we get a total work of 1734.12 kilogram meters, which is our unit of work. So here we have average mean power. Again, that's given 578.04. Uh, it's given up at the top. Our relative average mean power, again, when we talk relative, we just mean the average power divided by body weight. which then is equal to 578.04 divided by our body weight, which is 75 kilograms. And we get 7.707 watts per kilogram. And finally, the last calculation we can do is the anaerobic fatigue index. Uh, this can be defined then as the relative change from peak to minimum power. So how do we calculate that? First, we'll find the absolute difference. Um, which is equal to our peak power up at the top of the screen, uh, 763.44 minus 363.6, which gives us an absolute difference of minus 363.6. Gives us an absolute difference of 399.84. Then we divide that by our peak, so 399.84 divided by 763.44 gives us 
37, and to change that into a percent, we multiply it by 100, equals an anaerobic fatigue index of 52.37%. And again, in class, what we talked about is this anaerobic fatigue index is um, a good indicator of how fast you would slow down on this test. And the, the example I gave was Usain Bolt. So his fatigue, his anaerobic fatigue index would be very low. Uh, it would probably be around 30% or so um, as compared to um, other people. Uh, this subject here is actually someone who power trains and works pretty hard. So uh, an anaerobic fatigue index of 52% is actually really good. A lot of the students and uh, the other section of the class were in the 60s or so. But yeah, so again, uh, to say you fatigue really fast, if you were running like a 100 meter dash or something, then you would have a high anaerobic fatigue index. If you were able to maintain speed, uh, then you would have a low fatigue index. So um, I also post in the lab section that you guys need to go through. I'm not going to answer them here in this question in this section, but I'll tell you um, kind of how I would kind of suggest approaching this. So it says if you performed a power test for only a 15 second duration, what would you expect some of the value some of the values to be higher, lower, or stay the same compared to the 30 second test? So let's take a look. So here's the, the figure that I'll, I'll just kind of draw really briefly. But here's our kind of slop, sloppily drawn XY axis. I, I apologize for the, the terribleness of this computer. Um, let's see if we can make this work. So our power output is going to be, as I mentioned on the bottom of our graph here, we have so time. And then this would be power out, our power output. So as I mentioned, uh, if the test is actually done to um, maximal, our peak power is going to be located in the very first few seconds. And if we say this is 30, that'll be the end of the test. Halfway here is 15. Seconds. Right. So, what happens? And then, I, as I mentioned earlier, at 30 seconds, then our peak, our power output is the lowest. What usually happens is we'll see kind of a a slow decline here for about four or five seconds. And remember, we talked about that that relates to the PCR system, and then once glycolysis kind of starts to kick in, the exercise gets harder, so lactic acid uh, starts to be produced, lactate um, is then made, and we start to kind of feel a burn, and it gets much harder after um, about five to 10 seconds or so. And then we see a, a steeper decline, and then kind of slowing down to where we get to our minimum. All right, so to answer um, this first um, question here, then how would we compare the 15 second duration? What you essentially need to do is figure out which, um, which variables then are affected early on in this curve and which ones are affected later and then if they would go up or down. That's how I'd suggest doing that. And then finally, explain how energy is provided during the first 15 seconds of the test um, and the first 30 seconds. Uh, again, this kind of goes back to looking at that table that was in your notes talking about duration and intensity. I already hinted at the answers a little bit, um, but uh, make sure you think through that question. If you have any questions over either of these, feel free to stop by my office uh, before the next class and quiz, or uh, shoot me an email, and I'll do my best to get back to you quickly. Hope this helps. Have a great weekend.